Grace is eight months pregnant. This is her seventh pregnancy. She lost the last pregnancies. She remembers those two events so vividly. She nearly bled to death. By the time she was delivered to Palitza Hospital, some 25 kilometers away from here, on a borrowed bicycle, it was too late to save her babies. Grace is lucky to be alive today. Those two incidents nearly took her life too. The trauma has never left her. Her prayer is that this time things should be all right. For Esther, a decision has been made that she will deliver her baby at home. Seven months pregnant, Esther's first antenatal visit was a nightmare. A midwife attending to her was abusive and refused her any form of attention unless she came with her husband. Her husband refused, fearing he would be subjected to an HIV test. Esther vowed never to go back there. The script of Grace and Esther's story is that of many mothers like them in Uganda. Many of our mothers eh, don't attend Antinento, and eh, those ones who attend usually attend for one or two times and they don't complete. Yet, it's very important for these mothers to go through all the four stages, the, the four visits, so that they can be prepared very well for delivery. According to the 2011 Uganda Demographic and Health Survey, only 48% of women make four or more antenatal care visits during their pregnancy, a percentage which has remained almost the same since 2006. Although the survey shows a marked increase from 42% in 2006 to 58% deliveries under skilled care, a mere one-third of the women received postnatal care in the first two days after delivery. Women die as a result of complications during and following pregnancy and childbirth. The major complications include severe bleeding, infections, unsafe abortion, and obstructed labor. Factors caused mainly by failure to seek skilled health care or delay in accessing it. The survey further shows that although the maternal mortality has decreased from 506 deaths by 100,000 live births in 2001, to 438 deaths per 100,000 live births in 2011, the ratio remains high. Makere University School of Public Health, in partnership with the districts of Kamuli, Palisa and Chibuku in eastern Uganda, is implementing a three-year study called named Maternal and Neonatal Implementation for Equitable Systems, MANIFEST. MANIFEST intends to generate evidence that can contribute to solving some of the major demand and supply side problems for improving maternal and newborn care at district level in an integrated and sustainable way. Manifest treads the path of two earlier studies, that is the Uganda Newborn Study, UNEST, and the Safe Delivery Study, where transport and service vouchers were provided to increase access to safe deliveries at both private and public facilities. Despite their successes, UNEST and SAFE delivery study were projects that were expensive and lacked a sustainability mechanism since they were solely donor funded and so they ended. But they showed that it was possible to reduce maternal and infant mortality. Therefore, the team went to work and a more sustainable approach was agreed upon. And so, MANIFEST was born. So MANIFEST is, is doing quite the same thing but in a different way. And so we began to search around and we, thought we came across um, methods that are called uh, participatory action research methods. And these methods allow different stakeholders to be able to contribute to different aspects of the program and therefore increase chances of um, sustaining it but also being able to scale it up. Manifest 
is an innovative way of making communities and individuals take charge of maternal and newborn health care equitably by making them own the project. In this project, um, we want to work mainly with existing resources, existing resources in terms of finances and also existing resources in, in terms of um, human resources so people who can manage the project. Um, that, that, that is the main focus and we, we expect that this would make the project more sustainable. A two-phase methodology to the project has been adopted. These are the design phase and the implementation phase. The design phase involved the team consulting the communities, districts and national stakeholders. This helped the team understand the problem of maternal and newborn care as seen by the different stakeholders. The aim was to see how to work together to overcome the challenge of maternal and newborn mortality. Manifest employs three components to the study. The health system strengthening component, the community mobilization and sensitization component, and the savings and transport component. The health system strengthening component of Manifest looks at care at the health facility. The aim is to ensure timely response from health workers to enhance the basic safe delivery facilities and care for newborns. Some of the constraints identified included low staffing levels, poor health worker and client relations, low health worker motivation, inadequate health worker skills in relation to maternal and newborn care, poorly equipped health facilities and inadequate management skills. At this health centre 4, for example, the birthing room has no running water after the water harvesting system broke down and has not been replaced. The tiny room also has no newborn resuscitation table, is equipped with very rusty delivery beds that pose danger of infection to the mother and her newborn baby. The facilities are definitely inadequate for a high volume health centre such as this one with over 60 to 70 deliveries a month. Most of the time it's simple things, it's cleaning and all those things. For example, these beds are rusted just because somebody did not clean it well, somebody did not dry it well. It was found that the improvement of care begins by improving district health workers' skills in emergency obstetric care so that they can effectively manage and treat obstetric complications. Part of this training equips hospital staff to properly manage data systems to better monitor and evaluate program implementation. This should also include support supervision, mentorship and non-financial incentives such as recognition so that when mothers visit the facility, they find responsive health workers. With the training we had for five days, it helped, it helped us to improve on our skills. For example, are these newborns who are premature. We, we are able to resuscitate them if they have inadequate oxygen, to use the, the compressors to help the baby breathe. We have started appreciating the use of data. We have started appreciating what the results are. And initially, somebody we were pushing people to get us results. That you know, we want so many mothers to be delivered. We want so many children to be immunized. But you know, we had not sat down with them to know that you know they don't understand why they are doing that but in, we, through this training here i think it's, some of them you can see that you know they can use a result frame in the community mobilization and sensitization component a number of strategies have been adopted here community health workers referred to as village health teams move from home to home registering expectant mothers. They help mothers understand the importance of antenatal visits, the danger of birthing at home, and the risk they take by subjecting themselves to prolonged labor. They also help them prepare for birth by encouraging them to save money to facilitate referral. Above all, to identify the danger signs during pregnancy and how to handle them. The village health teams also employ community dialogues 
To understand the community's perspective of their challenges through shared experiences and how they want them overcome. Uh, these dialogues are meant to bring together different community members to try and uh, talk about the problems that they are faced with and see how they solve them within the resources that they have. For example, at this community dialogue meeting at Wuseta and Chibuku district, the following issues came out prominently. That most deliveries that occur at home are because pregnant women are not well prepared for the expected birth and therefore lack transport to the facilities at the time of birth. So women tend to choose to stay home during labor. There is also low involvement of male partners in reproductive health issues because of negative cultural beliefs, yet most Ugandan women adhere to very traditional birthing practices and believe that pregnancy is a test of endurance and maternal death is merely a sad but normal event. These beliefs often lead to very dangerous circumstances as the women often delay to get assistance, which sometimes costs their lives or the lives of the baby. To compound it further, many women report mistreatment from healthcare personnel as an additional reason to avoid seeking professional care during pregnancy and labor. Esawa singo unenolo isaba kariva abo mwiduwaluru, ababa tontona babayo kuna baso uro kwa abayo. Batiza ino kuhiria feedback anga batu kwa bante, bana ya mtu ya ambe, otuko mwiduwaluru ngu mkarali kurumwa, nenu ya giriaba saaba monga ba uli sibamu vita kuviti, bambu ningirira uli ingiriri inga tevali na kumufu wako. Nga tenge mbele jatu ukeremu, abata kwa uyambi we speedi, okuwaneka antu mtu wa baso uro kumutasa, okutasa kinde chiro mchida, nukutasa uo miwe. Na uwe sanga na abamu bafua, uro kuberanti, Uwiyambi uba utono atu ukiro mwiduwa liru na yaba saondiba mkuataka mango kumiyamba ukuoneka antiba mnakuwa lira asoro kubanga vya ala kusa. The community mobilization and sensitization component also uses radio talk shows and sport radio messages. In the radio talk shows, district health officials and community role models talk about the different aspects of maternal and newborn health on selected FM radio stations in the three districts. The savings and transport component of Manifest encourages expected mothers and their spouses to join local financial networks already in existence in the community. They are being told to also save money for maternal health so that when mothers reach the time of birthing, there is some money to help pay for transport and buying basic necessities for delivery and newborn care. Kanuke sabne right to go to Alimaki no Alo Marila, Tio Gurupu Alo Maro Gurupu, Nai to Kikapu, Group Na to Kasabio, Selef Sals. A to Kokitonka, Sirigin, Anai Mono, Ilukumina Kaisaka. As so Sirigin, a potake saga, Akino Negi Arango, a Quakara, Yabuna, Disa Musuja Karen. Trotte can go border border. Boda bodo yo na solo ku rucho muntu mangu okumuntu alokunani okudwaliro we are trying to cut the delays that um, come with negotiating for transport looking for transport and looking for money for transport so the mother is already guaranteed that she can be evacuated to a place of care within time and therefore receive care and we 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 believe that that is going to be able to reduce some of the unnecessary deaths that we see Manifest is looking good. The project is in its first year of implementation and already some positive changes are taking place. And then as a district we are already seeing that positive impact whereby more mothers are coming to attend antenatal care within a very short time. And then we are seeing more mothers actually come to deliver in the health facilities. Communities are excited about this. Like they want to be able to have a system that they can trust. They want to be able to have a system whereby if they have a problem with, um, with the health workers, they can be able to sit down with health workers and sort this out. The response from the leaders and from the community members themselves is, is positive because they all value the health of their mothers, they value the health of, of, of their newborns. So we have found that there is there's willingness and, and eagerness by the different stakeholders whom we are working with to work together to improve um, the health of the mothers and the newborns. Makere University School of Public Health hopes Manifest can be a flagship for a roll-out campaign 
that will end maternal and newborn deaths in Uganda. This kind of intervention in the community where we are learning how dialogue and how facilitating communities to address their own challenges is a very welcome intervention now. It has a potential of addressing the way we are programming for community-related interventions. Uh, we, through the dialogues they have, they have been making, involving the local leaders, involving the universities and the, the, the districts themselves, uh, to participate is a very good uh, indication that these, these, uh, these uh, interventions will be taken up and owned by the people themselves. Health is among the most important conditions of human life and a critically significant constituent of human capabilities. The health of the mother impacts the family and even the entire community. Her access to necessary health care largely determines health outcomes for herself and her baby. At least 20% of the burden of disease in children below the age of five is related to poor maternal health and nutrition as well as quality of care at delivery and during the newborn period. Furthermore, many children are tragically left motherless each year. These children are 10 times more likely to die within two years of their mother's death. Healthy children need healthy mothers. No doubt, the health of the mother vastly affects the health of all her children. The health of our mothers vastly impacts the health and success of our future generations. Any contribution towards the success of Manifest is a contribution towards saving the lives of mothers of Uganda and their babies who continue to die of the most preventable causes. It is unacceptable that a mother should die trying to give life to another.